Alrighty guys, today we're going to do our little review and a little um, pre-assessment of looking into the sun, earth, and moon. So Aaliyah, get started please. Click on start now. These first few questions are going to be a little review on everything that we've learned about the earth and how it interacts with the sun and the moon. So this model best represents what celestial movement? What is the Earth doing in this image? Yep, it is rotating. Rotating on its axis. All right, the next question is Earth's rotation on its axis does. It is the reason why we have day and night. Takes 24 hours. Is the reason we have seasons or is the reason we have day and night and takes 24 hours? You're right. It's the reason we have day and night and it takes 24 hours. Right, a little more review. Earth's revolution around the sun is part of the reason we have seasons. Takes approximately 365 days. Is the reason we have day and night or is part of the reason we have seasons and is the reason we have day and night? No, it is not the reason we have day and night. When Earth revolves around the sun, it's the reason why we have seasons and it takes about 365 days. So the next question is more review. Which celestial bodies are revolving or orbiting? And just a quick reminder, celestial bodies are things or planets or moons that are in our solar system. They are bodies. So which ones are revolving or orbiting? That is right. The Earth revolves around the sun and the moon orbits around the Earth. Coming to conclusion on our review, what movements do the red and white lines represent? Red lines show rotation and white lines show rotation or red lines show the earth revolving whereas the white lines show rotation. Red lines show revolution whereas the white lines show revolution. And last, the red lines show rotation and the white lines show revolution. So the earth does not revolve around itself. The earth revolves around the sun, but it rotates on its axis. So the red lines show rotation and the white lines show that it revolves around the sun. So now we're going to move on to our new information. I would like to see how much you guys know about this. So why do the moon phases occur? Do they occur because the moon orbits around the earth? Because the moon rotates around the sun? Or because of the amount of light it reflects as seen from earth? So you're partially right. The moon does orbit around the Earth, but another really big factor in why the moon phases occur is because of the amount of light we see from Earth that it reflects.
Here's our second question from our new knowledge. What's the name of this moon phase that this person is seeing from Earth? Is it a new moon? A first quarter moon? A waxing gibbous? Or a full moon? So something that you could have seen from your reading was that when the moon is fully illuminated or it's completely white, it's reflecting all of its rays back to Earth and so we call that a full moon. Next question is, if you're this person standing on the planet, and looking towards the moon, what moon phase do you see? Do you see a full moon, a new moon, a first quarter moon, or a third quarter moon? So remember, a full moon is when the moon is reflecting all of its rays from one side back to the earth and it looks so really, really full. When it's a new moon, there is no light being reflected on the moon's surface and so it looks almost completely dark. All right, our next question is, a waxing gibbous looks like what? picture from Earth. So you remember from your reading, waxing means getting bigger. So which of these ones seem or appear to be getting bigger? And gibbous means that it's bigger than 50% illuminated. So using those two helpful hints, try to figure out which one you think is a waxing gibbous. That is correct. That one is a waxing gibbous. It's getting bigger and it will eventually become a full moon. All right, we're on our last question. This is a waning crescent. Use the model next to this picture to locate the position of the moon in respect to Earth. So if you're standing on Earth right here, which position of the moon, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, do you think that you would see a waning crescent? So actually, number two is right after a new moon. And so instead of getting smaller, which is what waning means, it would actually be getting bigger. So you're right, it would be a crescent, but it would be getting bigger, so it's not waning. It's a waxing crescent. Good job, Aaliyah. Have a great day, and I appreciate you taking my quiz.